Hey friends, it's Tammy with the Rustic Orchard Home. We are going to do a project tonight that I'm super excited about. Um, they are actually called, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. They're ca it's called a porcelain doll pink pumpkin. And I know I, I use them every fall on my front porch. And so I just love the color because they're kind of a, a orangey pinky color. Hey, Tina. And um, so I wanted to try to see if I could figure out how to kind of mimic these pumpkins. So, oh, y'all are coming on. Yay. Okay. So if you hop on, be sure and say hi. Tell me where you're from. Let me know if this is your first time, okay? And then also, let me know if you were able to get notified that I was going live, because I think I have it set up, but um, I'm not sure if everybody got it. Hey, lady. <laughs> hi, Colleen. Okay, so let me know if you were able to um, hop on and get those notifications. And I believe you can go to the top of my page. Was not notified. Hmm. Okay. Hey, Justin, how are you? So I believe that you can go to the top of my page and it, where it says message on your desktop, it says message. You can click message and then um, Below it, it says get started and click get started and you will be on my notifications to um, be able to get notified when I go live, hopefully. I've been working on it, so hopefully it's set up right. Hey, Kathy. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, this is Tammy with Rustic Orchard Home, your creative inspiration for all things home. Okay, so... This is a project that I've been working on. Um, I have scoured Pinterest to see if I could find anything similar and I haven't found it. So I'm super excited to show y'all tonight. Um, and then the design back here is one that I haven't seen either. So I'm really excited to show you and kind of show you how easy it is. Now, this is the, the pink heirloom um, hybrid pink porcelain doll pumpkin. Let's see, can y'all see that? And so it's kind of a peachy pink and it kind of has like a sheen of a, like white over it. And if you see them um, at the pumpkin patches, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I love them and I love the blue ones too. I don't know if you've seen the blue ones, but they're kind of a blue gray. So this is the paint technique that we're gonna do tonight. Hopefully, can y'all see that okay? Let me move the raffia. So that's the color, okay? And I'm gonna show you how I did these, but this is the part that I'm even more excited about. So y'all know how I love spindles, right? And so I had, remember the blocks? Let me grab one. Okay, so remember how I showed you that paint technique the other day with just these blocks, just a block of wood, okay? So I had these blocks and I stained them. Um, and then I cut them out to where they were a little bit rounded here. So this right here, this is just that square block rounded with my jigsaw. And then I got spindles and placed them on there. So I'm gonna show you how I did these super cute. Oh my gosh, I love them. But you're going to have to wait till the end. I know I'm a tease, right? Okay. So, I will show y'all how I did those. Again, I have not seen them anywhere, so I'm super excited to show you. There's a bunch of y'all on here. I'm so glad you're here. If you um like what you're seeing, be sure and share. And I will do a giveaway at the end of one of these pumpkins, okay? Um for the person that I draw that has commented that they um, liked my page and shared. Okay, so we'll do a drawing um, just like we did last week. That is actually going out tomorrow. Um, I personalized it for the girl that won and it's being shipped tomorrow. Um, so, okay, let's get started. Are y'all ready? 
Y'all ready for this? <laughs> Pink is super cute. Yes, and um, from what I understand, it's something that's super popular for like breast cancer awareness too, the pink pumpkins. Um, so I also have this, I kind of did like a nesting that I did, whoa. See how these are like a nesting pumpkins and they're just, it's a block of wood. Um, I would say probably an inch and a half thick maybe, but what it was was an old door. Um, from a dentist office the big heavy solid um, doors and you can see see how it's got like that was the inside of the door okay so I just cut the door up to use for some of my stuff so that's what I'm using tonight and then I did this all on the table saw so I just cut it in squares and then cut this in squares and then angled it with the table saw um, so if you have a table saw, you can so do this with scrap pieces of wood, okay, y'all? Or you can buy them. I know I've seen probably kits even done with it. Thank you, Donna. Yay. Oh my gosh, y'all are so awesome. I'm really excited about this if you can't tell. <laughs> okay, so then I, I didn't cut out um, because I only had my table saw. Because this wood is so thick, my jigsaw wasn't long enough, okay? So I had to use a table saw and I had to glue this on. So I used wood glue, okay? So let me tell you what we're gonna use. We're gonna use Flamingo. Actually, first, we're gonna use um, Tobacco Road Gel Stain, Dixie Bell's Tobacco Road Gel Stain. And I like to just stain them all so they're one uniform color, okay? And then um, I'll use the Flamingo Pink, Dixie Bell Flamingo Pink, and we'll do a faux technique over the top of it with drop cloth, okay? I know, I wish you were here painting with me, Donna. And then I have chocolate for the stem. If my Tobacco Road stem isn't dark enough, then I'll go ahead and paint it chocolate. You know, just have that as an option, okay? Okay, so we have the paint. You'll need a chip brush. Um, obviously if you're doing the ones with the spindles, you'll need spindles and I'll tell you how to do that at the end. <laughs> you got to stay with me. Um, wood glue if you're doing the spindles. Um, a water bottle, some like decorative paint brushes, just depending on the size of your surface. Okay. And, um, you will need to do the leaf. On here like I just use the leaf from this stem okay it, it doesn't matter what it is because you're gonna paint this too see how it's bright and bold and really really bright well I don't want it really really bright because my um, pumpkin is kind of that muted pink color you can layer the stains to make it darker absolutely absolutely so I'll, I'll let it dry and if I want to just continue to use the stain for the brown, for the stem, I can. Or um, if I don't want to let it dry again, <laughs> I can just paint it and be done. So it's totally your call, whatever whatever you want to do. Um, water bottle, an old, old rag, so either a t-shirt or whatever. Um, let's see, oh, and a hot glue gun to glue your leaf if you decide to do the leaf on there. I just think, especially with the spindle ones, cause you're kinda like, is that a pumpkin? But when you put the leaf and then the stem and the raffia on it, it's like, that's a pumpkin, that is so cute. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I think that's everything there. And again, y'all remember, in the top of my page, if you wanna get notified for lives, click on message, like you're gonna message us, and then click get started and um, I'll get a notification, and I believe it's set up. I'm not gonna promise anything yet, but that's the plan. <laughs> so, okay. So, I'm gonna take my tobacco, and I'm just putting it right on. I'm not gonna pour it on my palette, because I wanna just get started. And then I'll take my rag and rub it in, okay? So I just want it to be stained because I sanded these to kind of round the corners um, just to give it a little bit of depth so that it didn't look so much like a square pumpkin. I wanted it to kind of look round. 
if that makes any sense. Okay. And so I'm doing the whole thing. I'm going to get the sides. And this, the gel stain is water-based, so it dries super fast, which is another reason that I love to use it because it's not like an oil-based where you have to wait. Um, and you don't necessarily have to do this step if you're painting it anyways. I just like to have that kind of finished look because that gives me the option if I decide that I want to sort of distress it at the end. Um, it gives me the option to be able to do that and not have to worry about, you know, going to the raw wood and then having some that's brown. So it's definitely an option that you could skip and just go to the paint. Okay, so like so, we have it all, oh, I missed the side. And remember, when you're using wood glue, be really careful where you get it. Um, you wanna try not to get it on the part that you're gonna be staining because it will not take the stain well. Okay, so we stained the whole piece and we'll let it dry. I got my blow dryer out just to kind of speed the process up so that you weren't here all night. <laughs> because I know I don't like for y'all to wait. So it's gonna be loud, so hold on just a second, okay? Okay, so remember, if we get at least 50 shares, we will do a drawing for one of these pumpkins that I will send to the lucky winner, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna use the Flamingo Pink. And there's actually a couple of different ways you can do this, but I'm just gonna show y'all one tonight. Does anybody have any questions? And I always wet my brush. Thank you for sharing. Y'all are amazing. It helps so much uh, with the reach on our page. It really shows more people our page um, so that everybody can join in some of this fun. Okay. So and this is the flamingo and like I said you don't necessarily have to do the stain part um, but if you decided that you wanted to distress it it would already be done and you wouldn't have to worry about it. While you make fake bake cupcakes, what's that? So I love this color. Like I said, these are some hybrid pumpkins. Um, they're called porcelain doll that you get as far as like, it's a real color. I know y'all are probably thinking, if you haven't seen them, you're thinking, a pink pumpkin, seriously? <laughs> no, really, <laughs> it's a real color, and I love them. Okay. I probably should have painted one and had it totally dry. 
so I didn't have to burn the blow dryer so much. <laughs> So you see the color, let me get closer. Okay, and I'll wanna do two coats, but you can kinda see. Um, Carol, the paint that I'm using is Dixie Belle paint. My link is above in the um, live, so you can click on it and go straight to the Dixie Belle website and check out all of the colors that they have. This particular color is called Flamingo, just Flamingo, and it's perfect for these pumpkins. Totally perfect. Like, I, I was surprised. Super surprised. Okay, and I'm going to put the blow dryer on it again. Let me cover my paint just a little bit. Yes, Wendy, they, they would love it. And like I said, these are super um, true to the color, so it's great. Dixie Belle has 64 amazing colors. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this. Y'all stay with me. Now you know it's best to just let it dry in between coats, but for the sake of time and the sake of our live, I'm hurrying it up a little bit. <laughs> um, I agree, Lynn, as far as the um, coverage, it covers amazing. And I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. I used to love a different paint brand. And when I first tried this, I wasn't super crazy about it. Um, and then I started using it a little bit more and I, I won't use the other now. I will only use this. That's how much I love it. I love that it dries hard, but that you can still wet distress it if you dampen it. Um, but then it's not going to just peel off or scrape off like some other chalk type paints do. Okay. I'm just going to do the second coat on the top just again for sake of time. Okay, y'all? But yeah, I do, I love it. And this color is perfect, especially with the um, wash technique that I do over the top of it when we get done. And then I'll show you how I did these adorable, look how stinking cute those are. you Lynn for inviting your mom and others that's great if y'all can invite people I didn't I guess I didn't realize that you could do that heck yeah invite away <laughs> okay so here is the two coats 
on that, okay? And I, I goofed and painted the stem, so I need to paint it brown after all. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was just a little too excited. So I'm gonna go in and do um, the brown stem with the brown paint real fast, just so that <laughs> we don't have an orange stem. So this is the chocolate brown. Like I said, y'all, I'm super excited to show you this. And I really hope that you try it. And be sure if you do try it, to show us on the page. Like, send us a message and show us what you've done because they're um, super fun and we love to see how we have inspired you to try some projects that you may not have tried otherwise. If I miss your comment, be sure and ask again. Don't think that I'm ignoring you because I'm so not. You love the pink. It's like it's kind of a peachy pink, and it really does resemble the um, pink porcelain doll pumpkins. Like seriously, do you stir your paint before you use it? I shake it. I shake my paint before I use it, um, and it's fine. It doesn't cause bubbles or whatnots. Okay, so. I did the stem brown, so that looks a little bit better. <laughs> hey, Patricia. Yes, tag me Rustic Orchard Home and show it off. Oh my gosh, so smart, Donna. I have some really smart friends. It's so nice, because <laughs> I wouldn't have thought to tell y'all that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take another chip brush. And when you get new chip brushes like this, sometimes the um, bristles try to come out. So if they start to come out, make sure that you take the bristles off your piece before it dries um, because it will dry on there and it'll dry really hard. What am I making this evening, Pam? We are doing the pink porcelain heirloom pumpkins. I'm showing you the technique for that. And then I will show you at the end how I created these super cute decorative little pumpkins um, that I'm super proud of. So yes, painted pumpkins is what we're doing tonight. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm gonna... dry brush Wet your brush just a little bit, not a lot. You don't want it drenched, you just want it kind of damp. Thank you, Brooklyn, you're so sweet. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take my chip brush and I'm gonna barely put it in my paint. So can you see how it's just barely on there? And then I'm going to pounce it off on my paper towel. Okay, it's kind of hard to see because the paper towel is white. And then basically I'm just dry brushing the pumpkin part. If we get on the stem, we can put some more chocolate paint on the stem and be fine. Had this problem before, any tips on getting the bristles off without damaging too much? Just a light touch and then just go back over it. If you just do a really light touch getting it off of there and then do another stroke right over the top of it. It should be totally fine. Okay, so can y'all see me okay? If the comments are in your way, swipe them out of the way so that you can see. So I'm just doing a dry brush on here, just ever so slightly. Okay, can you see that? So very, very little, okay? And then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna mist it just a bit, not a lot. I'm gonna let this dry just a few seconds. Um, 
because I don't want it to all just totally wash off but I'm gonna mist it and you see how far away I am because this spray is really a nice fine mist and so it kind of got on there and you can do this as many times as you like until you get the desired look that you want okay so you just kind of play with it and so I'm wiping it back and I'm gonna wipe it back some more. And this is another um, thing, like if you get too, if you take too much off, you just layer it. You just do it again until you get the color that you like. And what I like about it is these particular pumpkins, the porcelain doll pumpkins have a, a kind of a white sheen over the top of them and so this just really brings out that true color okay I'm gonna do just a little bit more and spray it again and again it's there's really not a right or wrong you're just kind of Go in over it until you get the desired look that you like. You don't want it to be striped. So I'm going with the grain of the wood right now and then I'll go against it because obviously I don't want it to be stripey. And remember, very little, very, you probably can't even see the paint on my brush now, okay? Let's see, get that glare. Okay, can you see that? Now, right in here, I could probably even take a little bit more off, but it just kind of gave that sheen, because you see how bright this is, so, and that's just one coat how bright orangey that is and then it really softened it up with that on there now the other thing that you could do you could take your paint and dilute it on your palette with water and then dip your brush in it if you're afraid to do the dry brush technique and afraid that you're gonna get too much you could just dilute the um, white with um, water and then go on to your piece. But now remember, when you do it like that, when you're adding water to your piece, you need to make sure that your top coat or your last coat is super dry, even though there is no writing to tell that it's backwards, but our furniture is always our, um, I can't read the rest of it, Leah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the, uh, I forgot what I was saying. I'm sorry. What was I saying, y'all? <laughs> oh, make sure that your, your base coat is super dry before you add a watered down um, paint to your piece because you don't want to pull back some of the other paint that's on there. So, what do y'all think? Is that something that you would try? Remember, this was the drop cloth. Um, and then over the top of the flamingo and then let me show you real fast what I did because this leaf was way brighter than I wanted it to be see how I mean it's just a bright green so I just painted it I took I took my drop cloth and I did kind of the dry, dry brush on it too. And I have some paint on this paper towel still, so that's where that's coming from, y'all. And then I just cut it however big or little that I wanted um, my uh, 
leaf. Oh, you can't see, I'm sorry. So uh, yeah, I'm just basically dry brushing the leaf to kind of soften it just because it was so bright. Well, let me get another one so you can see. So you can compare and contrast. See that? Can y'all see it okay? Oh, good, Jimmy. I'm so glad. Let's see. There. of a glare I know I'm trying to get it to where you can see but there's a big difference between the two and it just really softens it um, to add to your piece because if you compare them the, the really bright one is just really stark but this is so much um, nicer it just goes with it see what I'm saying painting a leaf is genius <laughs> y'all are so nice to me Goodness, I just love y'all. <laughs> okay, so then, um, let me put the lid, let me put the lid back on my paint before I spill it all. <laughs> I lost some of y'all, Oh, bummer. Okay, so, then you just take the raffia and tie it around your stem, however, whatever and then I tucked in the um, I tucked in the leaf I tucked it into my raffia and then I glued it so that it was kind of behind and I could kind of um, I could manipulate it to how I wanted it and then just tack it down with a daub of of hot glue and I just tied it in a knot and I like it kind of uneven and hairy scary <laughs> okay and so you have your your raffia like that right and then you just take a pencil and wrap the raffia around your pencil. Because I like to curl my raffia, okay? So it's wrapped around the pencil, can you see that? And then I slide it out, keep it still wrapped and just kind of scrunch it, squeeze it. And then it makes it look messy. So, what do you think? Do you like it? I'm super proud of them. Um, like I said, I will um, do a drawing if we get at least 50 shares and uh, send one of them to you. Obviously not the one where I've got fingerprints all over it because the paint was still wet. <laughs> um, now, Okay, so let's get to the piece de resistance. My pride and joy. I am so, I just love these. Um, I hope that you love them too as much as I do. But y'all know how I love spindles, right? So this one, let me show you. Okay, so there's that one. And then I just used one on here, so you can see, okay? And it's sticking up above there, so that's the stem, okay? And then on this one, I used three and just kind of rounded this um, spindle as well. And then this stem is actually the dark one, and I was just gonna show y'all. See, I really like it better painted 
painted a little spot there and I guess it needed to be big enough, bigger so that y'all could see it. Okay, I just think these are so stinking cute. Um, so, let me tell you what I did. You know I collect spindles, so anything spindles I just love. So this is what I used, okay? This was to a crib, so the crib spindles. And it was actually just the piece that lowers that I got at a flea market years and years ago, okay? So I had this whole spindle and had Mr. Rustic cut it in half so that it has a flat side, okay? So I have two now. So I've one spindle made two of these, okay? So, you can see, oh, like a bull in a china cabinet. <laughs> you can see how there's parts right here, and that is where I left it for part of the stem, or right here. So I cut it off here, and then left this part. And so this right here was the stem, does that make sense? On these. So that's that, I, I cut it here, let it extend above my piece of wood. Remember my, um, this is what it was, was a block of wood and I just rounded the corners with my jigsaw and kept the bottom flat so that it looked a little bit more like a pumpkin, not, not a square piece of wood, okay? Although like, you know, that still looks like a pumpkin, even though it's square. So that's what I did with these two, okay? And with this one, my first thought was to put a, um, like a blingy knob on it. And I, I went to do that and I didn't like it as well. So I just took this part of the whole spindle and I cut it right here, right here, and then cut it off here and glued it on. So that's what this is. So that's part of the whole spindle and I used it as a stem. So I'm using all of the pieces to all of the spindles, right? And then I wood glued it on the raw wood, you know, with the, the back of this and just glue it on like that and cut it off. Actually, I cut it first and then glued it. And so you can do, you know, three or whatever, however many you want to do on there. Um, I really did like how the stem turned out on here, so I kind of wish that I would have done them all the same, but it does look kind of cool to have one oddball um, so that they're not all the same like that. So you would, you cut it in half and you would glue it on here and you let it dry. And then you come back with your voodoo stain because of course this one's raw so you're gonna wanna stain it. You stain the whole piece and then you do the same thing that I did. Now this, I actually did a, a blue layer below it and then did the pink layer on top of it, um, the flamingo on top of it before it was totally dry and it kind of gave me like a gray hue, which you see too. Um, but for ease, I just did the flamingo. And then of course we did the leaf and I painted it because I needed it to be a little bit softer because I just, I think it looks better softer. And then you painted the stem, you painted the stem like that. What do y'all think? Do you love it as much as I do? <laughs> Or am I just partial? <laughs> if you like it, give me some hearts. Uh, the square pumpkin book. Sprinkly the pumpkin book. Is there a square pumpkin? Hmm. I'll have to check that out. You love it. I'm so glad. I hope that y'all will try this project. Even, you know, if you don't have a, a table saw and a jigsaw to cut out spindles, um, even if you can just find a square block and add um, a stem or a cork or 
a branch or something for the um, stem for the pumpkin, you could totally do this and use that flamingo pink. Again, my link is above for the Dixie Belle flamingo pink and all of the colors that I use tonight. So I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope that you'll try it. And I really hope that you'll tag me in it if you do. So this is Tammy with Rustic Orchard Home, where we inspire you to paint, create, and decorate a beautiful home. Y'all have a great night. Bye.